Welcome to video one for week seven. In the previous video, we defined parametric curves, things like arc length, things like parameterization. Now we're gonna do the calculus of parametric curves. A major point of this course is to extend the notions of single variable calculus to multivariable situations. A parametric curve still has one variable of input, time, but it has multiple variables of output, the coordinates of the vector that describes the motion of the parametric curve. We want to understand how the, the ideas of calculus, derivatives in particular, extend to this vector situation. And they extend in some pretty interesting ways, and we're going to have to define some new types of derivatives and understanding of derivatives to make sense of the vector output of parametric curves. But we'll start with tangents. Like with the first, the single variable functions, a multivariable output function like a parametric curve still has a derivative which still represents a tangent. However, it no longer represents the slope of a tangent line. It now represents a tangent vector because since the output of gamma is a vector, the output of its derivative is also going to be a vector, just the derivative in each of the coordinates. So we get a vector derivative instead of a scalar derivative. A scalar derivative we can interpret as a slope. A vector is no longer a slope, but it's a direction. And that means that on a parametric curve, the tangent vector is the local direction of movement at that point. Everything we do here is going to be local direction vectors. All of the vectors described that come out of derivatives of parametric curves are going to be what happens at a certain spot in that parametric curve. So at this spot in the parametric curve, what happens at time equals zero, this parametric curve has a tangent vector of one, one quarter. That means that it is moving in this direction at that time. And the length of the tangent vector is going to measure how quickly it is moving. So it has a certain length that measures the speed that this is going through that point. And we can demonstrate this by thinking about multiple parameterizations. Last week we had several parameterizations of the parabola. Here they are again for your reference. These are all tracing the same shape, a little piece of the parabola y equals x squared. They traced it at different speeds though over different amounts of time. Let's look at what happens to the tangent at the point 1, 1. So the point 1, 1 is what happens at time equals 1 in each of these. Here it happens at time equals 1 fifth. But all those points, we go through the point 1, 1, we get a tangent vector. The tangent vector comes from the derivatives. The derivative of t, t squared is 1, 2, t. Derivative of t squared, t to the 4 is 2, t, 4, t to the t cubed. Derivative of square root t, t is 1 root t, 1, so forth and so on. Each of these derivatives are derivatives of a reparameterization of the same thing. And if we evaluate them going through the point 1, 1, then we get vectors that are all in the same direction. Each of these vectors has a y-coordinate, which is twice the x-coordinate, but they have different lengths. And I can visualize that by having this parabola here. Here's the point 1, 1, and we can have either a short or a long tangent vector, all pointing in the same direction, but all having different lengths. That tell us that the reparameterizations of this parabola don't change the direction of movement. At 1, 1, the direction of movement is fixed, but they change the speed. The parameterization with tangent vector 5, 10 is going very, very quickly. The parameterization with vector, tangent vector 1, half 1 is going quite a bit more slowly. And this is important to realize that the tangent carries now two pieces of information, the local direction of movement and the local speed of movement. Sometimes we want to separate these things. The speed is just the length of the tangent vector. So I want to think about speed, I have to just think about the length of this vector. That gives me my scalar notion of speed. And I'll use the word speed to mean scalar and velocity being vector, which is pretty standard in the physics literature. I can take my tangent vector and I can divide by its length to give me something which I'll call the unit tangent vector. And that's going to be a nice description of the direction of motion regardless of the speed. It's always length one, unit tangent. Unit for a vector means length one. So all of those reparameterizations of the parabola, 
They all have the same unit tangent vector. If you take all those vectors, divide by the length, you will get 1 over root 5, 2 over root 5. In all of the cases, that is the direction of motion at 1, 1, regardless of how fast we're moving through it. And this is going to be a theme that we're going to pick up quite a bit with tangents, is we're going to use gamma prime to either talk about the whole thing gamma prime, all of the information, or the length of gamma prime, which is just the speed, or the unit tangent, which is just the direction.